You're listening to How to Win with Mike Moore, the podcast that provides you with practical insights on how to win in every arena of life. Hello, I'm Mike Moore, and welcome to the How to Win podcast. These podcasts are based off 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. It says, now thanks be unto God who always causes you and I to triumph in Christ Jesus. Now, listen, this is 2023, and I, can, I guess you can tell I am hyped about 2023. I believe this is going to be your best year up until this time. Now, listen, I've got something exciting. We're going to begin our leadership edition. That's right. Our leadership edition of the How to Win podcast. And these podcasts that we're going to be sharing with you every Tuesday and every Wednesday, and then it's going to be on demand. You can go at your convenience and get it, but we're going to be sharing on leadership. And the purpose of these podcasts is to inspire and to equip leaders to lead at a higher level. I know you want to lead at a higher level. So regardless of your level of leadership, maybe you're in a inspiring person. You want to become a leader. It's good to know about leadership before you get the title. So it's going to be a blessing to you. Or maybe you're a new beginner. Maybe you have a new leadership assignment. This is the first time you've been called on to do what you're doing. And I want to help you to do it at a high level, or maybe you're an experienced leader. Listen, leadership, you never arrive. That's the secret. I want you to remember that. I've been leading for 42 years and eight months. I led a church and guess what? I'm still growing. I'm still learning because you really never get to the end. It is a journey. And I want you to take this journey with me. Now, We're going to minister leadership across every area. Now, my background, now I'm a business major. I have a degree in business, but my background and my experience is in the church world. But these principles will cover every arena of leadership. You have to have good leaders in the home. Leadership, maybe you're a student, government, student government, maybe you're president, maybe you're the captain of the football team, maybe you're a student leader, maybe you're a leader at work, leader in business, leader in education, maybe you're an educator. I want to help you to be a good leader. Maybe it's the military. Maybe it's ministry. Maybe it's church. Maybe you're a community leader. Maybe it's government, politics, medicine, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. These principles cover any arena of leadership. And I want to help you. I want to help you to grow. I want to help you to develop. And I want to help you to excel. Come on, say excel. We're not going to just lead. We're going to lead at a high level and people are going to be excited about our leadership. Now, today, this very first topic, very first series on leadership, I want to talk on the essence of leadership. Make a note of that. I want to talk on the essence of leadership. You, If you know anything about me, I love words and words are so powerful. So what do I mean when I said the essence of leadership? The word essence means basic, a basic trait or set of traits, a basic trait or set of traits that define and establish the character of something or someone. So we're going to be looking at leadership. We're going to be looking at the basic traits of leadership. We're going to get into the character of leadership. What is this leadership is all about? When this series is over, you're going to have a handle on what leadership is now. 
I want to give you some introductory statements and I want you to follow along with me. And we're going to learn together. It is possible, first statement, it is possible to have a title and not know who you are. It is possible to have a title. You have the title of leader, but not know who you are. I remember when I first start pastoring above 42 years ago, this beautiful, wonderful group of people, a small denominational church, invited me to be their pastor. I prayed about it, felt God was leading me, and I accept the pastorage of this small church. I had the title, but I didn't know who I was. I didn't know what a pastor was, but I had the title. One of my uh, members, a friend of mine, someone I looked up to, asked me a question after I had, because I had been taught to win people to Christ. I'm the pastor, but I had been taught and I had this zeal to win people to Christ. So every sermon I taught was a, what I'll call a salvation sermon, a salvation sermon. Now I'm the pastor, but every sermon is a salvation sermon. I'm trying to get folks saved. And this beautiful partner, beautiful friend of mine who was connected to me, asked me a question. I'm the pastor. I have the title. She said, Mike, and we were friends, why do you always preach these blood sermons? Now, she wasn't being disrespectful. She was not downgrading the blood of Jesus. But she said this to me, and it was a revelation. She, she said to me, most of us are saved. And yet you're trying to get us saved. And a ha ha moment came. I began to find out that my job as a pastor was to feed the flock and to grow the flock. Sure, I should try to get people saved. But I was called to develop people and take them from one stage of spiritual growth and development to another. It was an aha moment. Maybe you have a title, but you don't know who you are. Maybe you have a desk marker and it says that you're over this. You're the supervisor. You're the president. You're the principal. You're the, the senator. You're the community leader, but do you know who you are? Second statement is this. It is possible to have a role and responsibility and not know what you're doing. It is possible to have a role. It is possible to have responsibility and not know what you were are doing. Think about it. 42 years, eight months, I pastored, but a large number of years, I did not have a clue about what I was doing. Now, I had a role. I'm the pastor of the church. I had responsibility, but I didn't know what I was doing. Do you know what you're doing? Now, let's change our analogy. My wife and I have been married for 44 years. She's my very best friend. I love that girl. She loves me. However, in the, in the early years of our marriage, we had marital problems, marital issues. Had nothing to do with the fact that we did not love each other. We didn't know what we were doing. We didn't know that marriage was a game and it had rules. We didn't know that if we played by the marriage rules, then we would win the marriage game. We had no idea that there were principles. We had no idea that, that, that God had instructions about marriage. When we came in line, began to know what this game is and how marriage is different from singlehood, then our marriage began to grow and began to thrive. 
you're in a leadership position, but do you know what you're doing? Do you know the leadership game? Do you know the rules of the game? In the same way that any couple who understands the game of marriage and the rules that govern the games can have a successful marriage, any leader can be successful. You can be successful if you understand the leadership game and that it has certain rules and principles that govern it. When you bring yourself into alignment with those principles and those rules that govern the leadership game, then your leadership will thrive. Here's another statement. Many people in leadership positions Many people, I didn't say all, but many people in leadership positions are not leaders. They are managers. Oh, think with me. Think with me. Think with me. Many people in leadership positions are not leaders. They are managers. Now, we need good management in any organization. We need leadership in every organization. So in your organization, whatever it is, it is, it is, is it a managerial, does it have a managerial DNA or does it have a leadership DNA? Now, we need good management. And it's going to sound like I'm giving management a bad rap. But management brings stability, but it will never truly cause growth. Never truly have growth. The key to growth in any organization, and I mentioned the different arenas, home, student, work, business, education, military, Ministry, church, community, politics, government, medicine. The the key to growth in any arena is leadership. A leadership culture is what truly causes growth. Here's another statement. And here's this is a this is a statement. It is possible to be a good manager and a poor leader. It is possible to be a good manager and a poor leader. Hopefully we can call some of you that are strong managers to become good leaders. And you can, you can, you can, you can. You don't have to throw every, all of your good management skills and experience. You don't have to throw it all away. But leadership is a different animal. It's not the same. So here's a question for you, and we're going to follow this question. I want to know what your answer is to the question. We're going to run. We're going to run after the question. What is the difference between managing and leading? That's a question. I want you to answer the question. Hopefully, I can give you some insight as we walk out this leadership thing. But what is the difference? Make a note of that. Think about that question. Study it. Give me some insights. Talk to me about what you think is the difference between managing and leading. Now, I'm going to talk about Uh, In this first episode, episode one of the essence of leadership, we're entitling episode number one, what is leadership? What is it? What is leadership? That is the question. What is leadership? Now, I'm going to give you a definition. I'm going to give you some insight. I'm going to give you a proof text. And I want you to want us to go to God's word because the word of God is the answer for leadership. It's the answer to everything, but it's also the answer to leadership. So I'm going to give you an insight or definition, if you will, of what leadership is. Then I'm going to give you a proof text. You know, I like the number seven. 
If you don't know anything about me, I love the number seven. I'm not sure we're going to get through all seven of these, but we're going to do a good job with what we do. Okay. What is leadership? What is leadership? And remember my background is church, but we're talking across the board. We're talking about you. What is leadership for you? Here's, here's the first def- definition. Leadership is the art of inspiring people to do something with the focus on people. Very simple definition, but it's profound. What is leadership? Leadership is the art of inspiring people to do something with the focus on people. Let's look at this definition. Let's, 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 let's get in there and digest the definition. Leadership is the art of inspiring people to do with the focus on people. Leadership is the art. Now think about that for a moment. Leadership is the art, A-R-T. Now, when I say art, I'm not talking about drawings, art. I'm not talking about paintings, art. I'm not talking about sculpture, art. But it is an art. Leadership is the art. In other words, it's a skill acquired, watch this now, by experience, study, observation. It is a skill. Leadership is a skill. And you can be unskilled as a leader. And that's our goal, to help you elevate your skill level. It is a skill. Come on, say that. It is a skill acquired by experience. So what I'm doing is I'm not giving you a formula. This is not going to be a formula. Maybe you're leading. You say, oh, I sure, sure do hope he give me a formula so I can go from where I am to success. No, it's, it's a skill that you acquire. That implies time. But it's a skill that you acquire by experience. That's why I feel so comfortable in this seat talking about leadership. Because I have 42 years and eight months of experience. Now, there's some good in that experience, some bad and some ugly. Okay. But I have acquired a skill. And we know that skill can operate on different levels, but it's a skill. Leadership is a skill that is acquired by experience. It's acquired by study. I'm going to lay out some beautiful things on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I'm going to lay out some beautiful things. Uh, It's going to be just absolutely amazing. But if you listen to this podcast and you never go back and study it, you never meditate on it. You, you never run your own research on it. Because in our journey, you can disagree with everything that I say, but know what you believe. Know why you believe. Know why you're disagreeing. It is a skill acquired by experience. So if you're an aspiring leader or you're a beginner, listen, give yourself time to grow. Give yourself, if this is a new assignment, give yourself time to grow. And you will grow. But you're going to have to study this leadership thing. I am studying leadership. You have to study leadership. For years, I didn't know the difference. Maybe I'll speak to maybe you're a pastor or a minister. For years, I didn't know the difference between leading and preaching. I thought that if I live right and preach good, the church would grow. The church will be successful. I had no 
understanding of leadership. I came across a book by John Maxwell entitled The Leader Within You. When I read that book, it just opened up all kind of avenues in my thinking. And then I began to realize that I can be an outstanding preacher and, and not grow a church. I could be an outstanding minister in terms of uh, uh, in terms of just the the title and the position and, and can just preach through the Bible, proof text after proof text and and give great illustrations and and people are amazed at my uh, ability to communicate and yet not be successful in my church. Won't grow, won't grow. Because I thought preaching and living right, if I just preach and live right, everything would take care of itself. I didn't know that leadership was something that I needed to know, something that I needed to study. And then it is a skill acquired, experience, study, and observation. You need to observe people that you believe to be good leaders. And then you can observe some things that people who are not good leaders and you can learn what not to do. So it's an art. What is leadership is an art of inspiring people An art of inspiring people is an art of inspiring, inspiring. Whenever you take, whenever you get, uh, talk about leadership, you have to talk about that word inspire has to be something. It is the art of inspiring, not telling, not commanding, not, not demanding people is the art of inspiring people. Leaders inspire people. Let's look at that word inspire. The word inspire means to excite. It means to encourage. It means to fill with the urge. And then I I ran this word through and I found out that the Latin meaning of the word inspire is to breathe life into, to breathe life into, to breathe life into, to breathe life into. And because it's inspiring people, it's breathing life into people. Here's an analogy. I believe, and I'll give you the analogy, I believe that God God has put in every person the desire to achieve, the desire to win, the desire to be good at something. That is a flame that God placed in the heart of every person, saved and unsaved. There is a flame, a desire that everyone has to achieve. Nobody wants to fail People want to win in life. Nobody wants to fail. People want to win in life. Leaders have to approach people understanding that there's a flame in every person. They want to achieve. They want to win. They want to do good in life. There's a flame. But often circumstances, dysfunctional environments, often Negative experiences, disappointments, rejection cause that flame in people to flicker. It's a low flame. It's a low flame and it flickers. Now, listen at this. The word inspire means to breathe into it. Now, take that analogy. It means to blow air over the low flame. And science tells us that when we blow air over the low flame, it causes it to to glow. And that's what leaders do. People come to us and they have a low burning flame. But under our leadership, we blow over the flame and causes it to glow glow. 
Now, <laughs> managers sometimes blow the flame out. They, they just blow it out. There are some people in positions, they just blow the flame out. It's flickering, but because they lack the skill to inspire, they dictate, they demand. that, And so the flame, rather than glowing, it goes out. I'll give you another analogy. This word, inspire, means to breathe life into. Think about mouth-to-mouth resuscitation. Mouth-to-mouth resuscitation. I know there are some circles and some people that believe that, that we shouldn't do that anymore. I don't know, but take the analogy. A person is not breathing. A person is not breathing. And you give them mouth-to-mouth resuscitation. You put your mouth on their mouth and with other things and you blow air into their mouth, into their lungs, and they begin to breathe. Think about it. That's what leadership does. When people, uh, followers are not breathing, they are not breathing. The leader Bro, bro, blows breath into that person, that follower that's not breathing and causes life to come in them. Now, someone who has just a managerial bent, and I know it's going to sound like I'm giving man- management a hard time, but trust me, we need a paradigm shift, and that's what I'm shooting for. See, when a, when a person that just has a managerial bent, if the person is not breathing, this person says, well, let's take that person to the morgue. Let's just take them to the morgue and let's find somebody else. Let's just take them to the morgue. They're dead. Let's just find somebody else. But a leader, no, we're going to give mouth to mouth resuscitation. That's what inspiration is. It is not blowing out the flame of people. It is not sending people to the morgue because they're not breathing. Just because they're not breathing does not mean they're dead. And that's how a leader thinks. A leader thinks we're going to inspire, breathe life into that which is not breathing. Now, listen at our definition. Leadership is the art of inspiring people to do. Inspiring people to do. So great leaders get people to do things. Great leaders create great results, doing, doing, but they inspire, watch this, notice the order, people to do, people to do, with the focus on people, people to do, people to do. Notice do is behind people, inspiring people to do, inspiring people to do, inspiring people people. Now listen, we need a paradigm shift because we've tried to get doing before the people. Doing is out in front of the people. So we put the cart in front of the horse, as it were. We're trying to get folk to do something when we're not connected to them. We've not connected to the people. We're not connected to the people. So we're trying to get people and motivate people to do that have no understanding of us and we have no understanding of them. We don't know what their desires, what their hopes, what their dreams, and we can, in some cases, care less as long as they do. So we're trying to motivate people to do when we should be focusing on the people, focus on people. Listen at the definition. A leader is the art of inspiring people. People, come on, say that. 
people. Now, watch this. The problem, and, and I almost resisted saying this, almost resisted saying this, but I'm going to say it. I didn't want to hit you with something too heavy in the beginning. I want to ease my way in, but I'm going to say this. The problem in many organizations, and remember, I'm not talking just church world. I'm talking all these other areas. And many of you, you're not leading in the church world. You're leading in the community. You're leading at school. You're leading in business. The problem with uh, the problem in many organizations is those in charge have a project first mindset and not a people first mindset. I'm going to say that again. The problem in many organizations, and you have to evaluate your organization. You have to evaluate your organization. The problem in many organizations is that those in charge, and maybe you're in charge, maybe you're an educator, you're in charge. The people in charge have a project first mindset and not a people first mindset. In other words, they have an orientation to action, not an orientation to relationships. They're more oriented to action, less oriented to relationships, so that they, again, are trying to get people to act, and they have no relationship with the people because they're too busy doing. I wish I could spend time with people, the leader says. I just got so many things I have to do. Now, listen, follow me. The Bible says, here's a verse, you know it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God so loved the world. I want to inject something else for world. For God so loved people that he gave his only begotten son. God so loved people. Leadership is a people business. If you don't have time for people, you don't need to be in leadership. Leadership is about people. It's about people. It's about people. It's about people. For God so loved people that he gave his only begotten son. Now, it didn't say for God so love projects. It didn't say for God so love uh, task. It says for God so love the people. And we need a paradigm shift. We need a paradigm shift in leadership arenas because we're too focused on the project, the goal, the task, and not focus on the people not focus on the people, the people we're trying to reach or the people helping us to reach the people we're trying to reach. So if we're focused on the task and not on the people we're trying to reach, we're going to come up short. If we're focused on the task and not the people helping us to reach the people, we're going to have some problems. Now, watch this. You mean to tell me? You mean to tell me? You're going to cover one definition of leadership? Yep, just one. Yep, just one. I want you to listen to this proof text. I want to give you the definition. I want to give you the proof text. Leadership is the art. It's a skill acquired by experience, study, and observation. An art that inspires, that breathes life into followers, 
inspires people to do. So leaders get things done. So it's not like they don't get things done, but they just get things done in a way that's different than the manager. The manager get things done. That's why we need management. But the leader get things done in a way different than the manager. Now, listen at this. Here's a proof text. Matthew 4, 18 through 19, Matthew 4, 18 through 19, it says, and Jesus walking by the Sea of Galilee saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and Andrew, his brother, casting a net in the sea. They cast a net for they were fishermen. So they were fishing for fish. Then Jesus said to them, now watch this, follow me, follow me. He's not going to push them. He's saying, follow me. I was talking to my wife about leadership and she said this. She said that the root word of leader, leader and leadership is lead. She said that the leader should be leading. So notice Jesus says, follow me, which implies I'm going to be leading you. And now notice he said, if you follow me, I will make you fisher of men. So you're going to do something. You're going to fish for men. And fishing for men is on a higher level than fishing for fish. So leadership takes you to a place higher than where you are. When people are under you, they go to a place that they wouldn't go to. See, they were fishing for fish and satisfied fishing for fish. A leader came on the scene. Jesus came on the scene. He said, now you follow me. Now you can be satisfied with where you are, but if you follow me, then I'll take you to a level that you've never gone to. In other words, you won't just be fishing for fish. You're going to be fishing for people. That's a higher level. Now watch this. Watch this. Follow me. Now watch this. Follow me. And I will make you. Let's stop right there. Follow me, and I will make you fishes of men. Now, notice fishes of men come after you. I'm going to do something in you. I'm going to help you. I'm going to add value to you. I know we want to catch the men. I know, Jesus, I know we're going to catch men. That's the outgrowth of you. He says, follow me and I'm going to make you. I'm going to do something in you. I'm going to help you. I'm going to add value to you. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to lift you up. And guess what? You'll catch the men, but I ain't going to concentrate on you catching the men. I'm going to concentrate on you. 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 It's going to be me and you. I'm going to love you. I'm going to help you. I'm going to support you. I'm going to listen to you. I'm going to resource you. I'm going to cheer you on. I'm going to correct you. I'm going to praise you. I'm going to protect you. And I'm trusting that you all do. But I'm not going to start with you doing this and you doing that and you got to do this and you got to do that. No, I'm, I'm really not going to grade that way. I'm going to grade how you grow. And I'm going to hold myself accountable for you growing. You. We need a paradigm shift because we have focus on folk doing. We've graded people by what they did. And in some cases, they did a great job, but they didn't grow. They didn't excel. They weren't happy. They weren't pleased. They weren't blessed, but they did something. And we gave them a check and said, great job, because you did something. Because that was our focus. Our focus was on them doing this and doing that and getting this done. And we totally ignored them a paradigm shift. 
a paradigm shift. A paradigm shift. In other words, leadership is the art of inspiring people to do with the focus on the people. Paradigm shift. Paradigm shift. Paradigm shift. If I, as a leader, can add value to you, we'll get a lot of stuff done. We'll get a lot done. But I'm going to shift my focus from the doing to you. Now, listen, we got a ways to go. In this first episode, we're talking about what is leadership? What is it? And we've learned one thing, that leadership is the art of inspiring people to do something with the focus on people. So has your focus been on people or has your focus been on them doing? Listen, I trust that you were blessed today. I trust that you uh, were helped today. Thank you so very much. Now, listen, we're going to come right back next Tuesday and we're going to go to what is leadership. And we're going to stay there as long as we can so we can get the essence. We'll understand what it's all about. And then Thursday, we're going to talk about leading yourself. It's going to be a blessing. We're going to go on a totally different track, leading yourself. You can't lead nobody else till you lead yourself. Thank you so very much. I appreciate this time that we spent with you, and I trust that you've been blessed. Listen, meditate, go back, look it up, go back and study it, share it with somebody else, and we'll see you next time.